A bit of a resurrection, but I've got some requests for more of Bram the Honorary Wizard, so here we go with part 3. It wasn't long after our incident with the dragon, that our DM decided that she wanted us to finally make the jump from students to teachers at the Arcane University. I protested this, as personally, I just intended on having Bram open up a tavern in the school and work there. Don't ask me why, it just felt like a distinctly Bram thing to do. She told all of us that we could choose what we wanted to do in the school, so long as we did something useful, magic related, and something that the school would realistically approve of. So, here we were at level 14. Our wizard, the DM's boyfriend in real life, working as a researcher. The bard, about as stoner as they come, becoming the school choir teacher, but secretly teaching students the electric lute on the side to try and form his own band. Our sorcerer was an evocation teacher, and quickly rising up to become the head of the department. I don't understand why she worked so hard, because trying is for people who don't think to paint dragons while they're asleep. Anyways, our necromancer had strangely become the school librarian and spent most of her time terrifying the shit out of new students. Meanwhile, Bram decided to only work part-time at the school. He offered to assist in teaching the eldritch knights that came to the school, but he only did this part-time. The rest of his time, he would spend opening up a bar just outside of the school. I figured that it would be a good way to earn some extra money since colleges and bars go so well together experience has taught me thus. And it would also allow Bram to take an active role in two out of three of his great loves. Magic, and alcohol, specifically beer. Beer is amazing, so off we go into the story, Bram is doing quite well for himself. The only real drawback is that the Archmage of the University doesn't much like him, as the number of students showing up to class drunk has tripled since he opened up his tavern. If you're wondering how Bram managed to maintain a job teaching magic at the university despite not having an ounce of magical ability within his sexy body, it's because at that point his bluff skill was so ungodly high that I was able to just convince people that I was casting magic. Either that or I'd just throw out an item that would mimic a spell. By this point I assume you know the drill of this character. Anyways, now to the story. About a month after opening up my tavern, it rapidly became the most popular in the city, due to Bram sinking almost all of his money into making it as lavish and high quality as hell. One day, a woman came into Bram's office to ask him for a job. Bram looked up and was speechless. Before him was the most beautiful woman who ever lived. Long flowing red hair, perfect features, and everything the honorary wizard could possibly find himself desiring. Now, I know that I should be suspicious, but hear me out. The DM was a romantic at heart, and liked it when her PCS had at least a bit of a romantic subplot in the story. If it isn't with one another, then she would sometimes create NPCs to fill the role. So, I just assumed that this beautiful woman was here to start off a romantic relationship with Bram. He's had such a hard life, doesn't he deserve a bit of happiness? I gave her the job, and she started working, and imagine my chagrin when one day she cornered me in my house and began to proposition me. Bram was of course flattered, but told her that he was more of a third date kind of guy first. Bram always was an old fashioned romantic. Unfortunately this woman wasn't listening, and kissed Bram before he could yell stranger danger. Next thing I know, I had to roll a will save. Rolled a 1. Bram started to kiss back, and the most eerie words my DM could possibly have said came out. She feels so cold. You kiss, and although you find yourself drawn into it, you feel no satisfaction from it. You feel nothing. You start to feel cold, so cold, you fall, limp to the ground. Bram opens his eyes and the barmaid is a motherfucking succubus, complete with bat wings, horns, demonic features and showing off quite a bit of skin. Bram tried to move, but before he could, the succubus locked lips with him again, and before too long, he was too weak to even move. Fortunately, the wizard had given all of the characters special earrings that allowed us to communicate telepathically with one another. Bram proceeded to mentally scream into all of them. Just as he about to die, the party bust in and slew the succubus, forgetting to capture and interrogate her in the process. Bram should have been more humiliated as he lay naked and immobile in his bedroom, being saved by his compatriots. Fortunately, Bram had no shame, although I, as his player, started to suspect that trusting anyone ever again was a very bad idea. 
We began to assume that someone wanted Bram dead for whatever reason, and decided to send a succubus after him for a precision kill, meaning that they didn't want to destroy the tavern. Fortunately, no one outside of the party knew that Bram was still alive, so, a few minutes later, the necromancer killed a homeless guy and the wizard enchanted him to look like Bram. I protested this, but I was the only good aligned person, and was still immobile as they were doing this, so I wasn't exactly in a position to stop them. I just smeared some dirt on my face and put some dirty clothes over my armor. I decided to just use bluff and convince anyone that looked at me that I wasn't Bram. Amusingly, this actually worked, and no one questioned that this person who looked exactly like Bram was dead. They didn't even notice that this homeless man still wore armor and carried a sword. Who needs the altar self spell when you're that good at lying? So, I waited outside of the tavern, asking for spare change and spending it on booze. Bram had just almost been murdered by a demon. Give him a break. After the body was discovered, the local king that we helped held a funeral for my unwilling body double, laying him to rest with much pomp and circumstance. Not long later, the city seized my tavern and put it up for auction. Anyways, so there were many buyers, but one group of noblemen seemed to be far more eager to buy the tavern than usual. I was immediately suspicious of this, as the DM never put anything like this in her campaigns unless for good reason. I decided to unleash my inner curious George and follow them. Fortunately, no one notices the homeless man who was clearly wearing armor. The rest of my party followed me, and we caught up to them just as they got into their carriage. The others began to formulate a plan to stall them so we could figure out who they were. Ignoring them, Bram ran up alongside the carriage and screamed before falling to the ground. I began a flare of fake dramatic pain that would make a FIFA soccer player blush. The carriage driver stopped and outstepped the nobles, who seemed suspiciously unconcerned with my plight. I bluffed, crying out that they must pay me either 1000 gold or I would call the city guard on them for reckless driving. For the first time in my lying life, it didn't work, but not because they didn't believe me, but rather they just didn't seem to care. Worse yet, they seemed to get very angry that I was threatening them. Seeing the way the wind was moving, the wizard decided to step in as a peacekeeper. At the very least he succeeded at stopping it from escalating into violence. As this happened, the bard managed to find a noble insignia on the personal items in the carriage. But before we could leave, things got worse. The paladins of some very lawful god of justice and law arrived, whose name I'm too lazy to google. A bit of backstory. Ever since the first game, the church and the arcane university have had a troubled relationship. The church believing that school willing to teach some students about necromancy and demon summoning was worthy of a violent purge. And the university being resentful that the church tried to stick their noses where they didn't belong. A few violent altercations later and the paladin smiting everything that moved afterwards and we were all sitting on a powder keg surrounded by dumbasses with lit cigars. Unfortunately for us, it wasn't just any paladin, but the Grand Inquisitor, who was there, and he looked like he really wanted to purge some heresy. The paladins put a stop to this and surprisingly politely told the nobles to be on their way. He then proceeded to intimidate our wizard, sorceress and necromancer into backing down, with the bard nervously playing his loot in the background. Next thing I know, the paladins are forcefully carrying me away, saying something about taking me to the clerics for healing. The others were nervous because splitting the party is always a dumb idea, but I decided to go for it. I was confident that I could bluff my way out of anything, and that these guys probably just wanted to heal me. Dramatic pause. Next thing I knew I was in a dungeon being tortured. I won't go into too much detail, but I managed to escape with the help of the party on the outside, and by impersonating a guard. I would skip over this, but it was one of my proudest moments, so I have to tell. I only killed one person in Fortress Temple that the paladins and clerics held me in, a very perceptive paladin who I managed to get the drop on and kill with the help of the necromancer. Not long later, another guard appeared, saw me with the dead body and drew his sword. With the help of three natural twenties in a row, and my obscenely high bluff check, I convinced the poor man that it was actually he that killed the man. He started crying, believing that he had forsaken his vows, and immediately went to turn himself in. One dead man, and one man's life being ruined later, I was free and escaped into the night. So, here we were more confused than ever. Why had the paladins and clerics of the lawful good god of justice decide to torture a man who, as far as they knew, was just a homeless man that some nobles ran over? One thing that I was sure of was that this city was full of goddamned liars, and the DM was the worst one. Honestly, on a whim, I said that we should stake out my tavern. 
Not knowing what else to do, the others agreed to it. When we got there, we found some pretty tough looking goons waiting outside, each wearing the same insignia that those nobles had. We didn't want to start anything, as we had no real evidence that the nobles were up to anything fishy, and the king wouldn't just immediately believe us. Fortunately, my paranoia paid off, and I had some secret entrances built into the tavern, allowing us to make our way to the top floor completely unnoticed, and with a perfect view of the main room. What we saw just proved that the conspiracy ran deep. The tavern was full of goons looting my goddamn store, taking a bunch of all of my valuable shit. Then, things started to fall into place. The Grand Inquisitor walked in, with the look that I could only describe as hippity hoppity, where the fuck is my property? We listened, and it turned out that paladins were part of a grand conspiracy, and belonged to a cult of an evil god, and the archenemy of the god of justice. They had infiltrated the church, and were working with the nobles, who in turn belonged to a local thieves guild. The two had worked together to assassinate Bram, and liquidate the belongings inside my tavern, which they somehow knew were far more valuable than the building itself. I don't want to bore you with all of the details and stuff, but it was basically that the thieves guild got to keep the most profitable tavern in the kingdom, and the church got all of the valuables. Magical items and other important stuff that I kept in there, for their own purposes. Fueled by rage, I cut the rope supporting the massive iron chandelier in the bar killing three bastards and maiming two. That's when I jumped down, revealing myself. I'm Bram the wizard, you sons of bitches, and I'm not dead. Don't blame me for saying that. It was all I could think of off the top of my head. Well, the thieves looked rather terrified, but there was something that I had forgotten about the cultists to that one evil god whose name escapes me. You see, they came there to kill and steal property, and they had already stolen most of my property. None of us had anything to lose at this point. What happened next was a pretty epic fight. The cultists were swinging their weapons at anything that moved, and had summoned half a dozen demons to aid them in battle. By the end of it, all of them were dead, and my beloved tavern was burned down. Excuse me, I just spent so much time and money on that tavern. I'd just like to have a moment of silence. The only enemy that was left was one of the nobles, who we just barely managed to save. The next morning, Bram revealed that he was still alive to the king, right in the middle of a grand joust that was actually being held to honor his passing. We brought forward the thief noble and he revealed the entire plot. After that, all hell started to break loose. In hindsight we probably should have revealed this in private, and not when most of the cultists were actually out and about fully ready for battle. Guards, knights and wizards were trying to stop the cultists, who proceeded to smite and backstab literally everything in sight. Eventually, we managed to drive most of them into the hills, and we will continue with this tale on a later date. P.S. Don't worry too much about the tavern. After all this was over, I built another even better one, and named it Bram's Tavern 2 Electric Boogaloo. So it would seem that the best way to get like more parts from an ongoing story is to actually just simply write to them. He you knew, um, but no, I got in contact with the guy that writes all these. And uh, he's like, oh, yeah, fucking right, yeah. And he sent me this the next day. So that's pretty cool, I think. Like, you know, hopefully we get some more stories. Because, like, like, I really enjoyed Bram. You guys obviously really enjoyed Bram. You know, he doesn't want more of his exploits, you know what I mean? And hopefully we get many more Bram episodes down the road. I, I really enjoy the writing style. I think it's a lot of fun. You know, I, you know, I, I like to think that you guys are very similar to me. And, like, you know, we enjoy, like, the same sort of things and stuff. And, like, you know, look, I really enjoyed Bram, so, look, hopefully you stay around and we keep, uh, we kind of keep enjoying the story together, you know what I mean? Because that's what it feels like to me anyway, like, you know, I just kind of, you know, I kind of, I'm, I'm more of a, what would be the right word, curator? Yeah, I like the word, I'm a curator of stories that I enjoy and help spread them, you know what I mean? That's why I would like to explain myself. But no, I did say Herr Schnitz Nazi was coming out today. Um, no, the Bram story just came out. I was like, no, I can't. people have been waiting long enough. So Herr will be back tomorrow. And like, you know, like to make sure you catch it, remember to subscribe. I know you probably already have subscribed if you're on this video, but like, you know, like, you never know. I might as well say. And uh, I'm also, what you know, I said before, I said yesterday, um, me and my girlfriend are working on something over on her channel, so links to all that jazz. Um, we're going to be editing the first video tonight. We want to get first two videos done, and then 
start working on it in earnest. So like, it's going to take a few days to get the actual ball going. There's no videos out yet, but I think if you're part of the Discord, you'll enjoy it. Like you know, so like during the Discord, there's a lot of inside jokes and references and stuff. So like, it's just something to check out. And like, I hope you enjoy. You know what I mean? If you haven't already, check out my Redbubble portfolio. You might just find something you like. Just stop! Just stop it! Stop! No! Just stop it! It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? No more! Where the fuck are your parents? Who are your parents? I'm gonna call Child Protective Services! It's time to stop!